Hi, I'm RK here and welcome to Fog of War version 2. Recently I uploaded a video where I talked about arrays in materials and this video basically allows us to pass arrays of numbers and use them in materials. Then we uh, used a custom expression to loop through those values to actually change color of uh, our testing mesh then if we uh, got it close to another mesh that was in that array, then it changed color to something else. And in that video, uh, I said that it's basically what I wanted to do uh, with the fog of war. The fog of war I made previously with uh, distance fields. And now that I finally figured out arrays in materials, I remade this uh, fog of war basically to use those arrays. And of course, this video is related to my previous two videos. So uh, if you want to, know, want to know the whole story, then make sure to watch those videos. I, I'm gonna link those uh, videos in the description. First one is of course the fog of war using distance fields. And the second one is arrays in materials. So, so let's get started and see what I have cooked. Uh, this is using an upgraded version of arrays in materials, but well, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, let's just see how it looks first and we'll kind of figure out how it works in a moment. So this is my simulation and this is my fog. And as you can see, those trees and that little cylinder is captured by the fog and well captured is uh, the fog is using those meshes to kind of modify itself and make holes where those meshes are and cool thing about this is that as like uh, distance fields we can change mesh size and this will update as well so it's all working fine we can make it larger we can make it smaller and just reset it to, to whatever we want same with that cylinder move it around up and down this one is actually a bit smaller so the the hole is not that big as in the tree because you know the, the tree has branches and, and leaves and it also affects the fog so so the hole is kind of bigger and this is and this is smaller but it's of course adjustable and you can make the hole bigger and the ratio bigger and all all that fun stuff um, so yeah how how does this work uh, to remind you how it worked previously I'm gonna uh, open the previous uh, fog material so this is the, the previous fog material is basically a volume fog, which is material domain volume and blend mode additive. Uh, in color, basically vector for white. We can change that later from a parameter, whatever. And in extinction, we have that little code. Uh, this section is making a banner and a, a vector noise. So basically stylizing our fog. And this part was using distance to nearest surface, which is distance fields, to actually check if the mesh is close to, to the fog or it's not. Uh, if, this, uh, if this object should be, uh, should be making a hole in our fog or not. But this is of course using distance fields. So if we choose to uh, use this system, then we basically uh, turn on and off our actors in a scene by turning on and off the distance field. And maybe we would like to use it for something else. And it's of course a big part of um, the visual effects and how the scene uh, looks in our project. So if we choose to actually turn off the distance field, then we cannot use it for, for anything else. That's why uh, the arrays in materials 
uh, was made by me, <laughs> kind of discovered, but not really. Uh, the, the forum posts were already uh, present, but I kind of made the first tutorial of it in Blueprints, and uh, the previous tutorials were just in C++. Uh, okay, so how did I do this? Basically, this fog is an actor. You can uh, kind of remember this name from, from the previous, uh, previous video about arrays. This is BP Actor Manager, and its purpose is basically to hold uh, those actors that are used in the, in the fog. Uh, and this is how I did it. You can do it uh, however you want. You can change those actors in runtime, then rebuild it, then do whatever you want. And this, is co this code is pretty much copy-paste from, uh, from what I did in that RS video. Just I kind of changed this to 16F for debug purposes, but we can go to 32F again. And yeah, it still works. Um, what I did differently from the previous video is um, this, this part, previously it was like length plus one or plus something, but it was a mistake on my part. You just need length and plug it to, to width. And I chose to uh, hook apply array to, to an event tick, so it's updating constantly. Uh, it's basically like 0 0.1 seconds interval. Second thing I changed is uh, this node. It was previously a draw box, but draw box was kind of weird because I had to add plus one to this, to this node. I don't know why, but with draw texture, it's not required anymore. And it's just like, you know, if you draw to index zero, then it's drawn to, to index zero. And it makes much more sense. So yeah, I'm sticking to draw texture now. Uh, and the other, other thing different is now I am using an alpha channel. Previously, I was just using a location, so RGB, and it was fine. But when we wanted to use alpha channel, then it was kind of not working. And it won't work with uh, drawbox. It will not work with draw line, with anything basically other than draw texture and probably draw material because we have to choose a blend mode because if you choose opaque then uh, it will basically omit the alpha channel you ha we have to choose mask and you might wonder why not translucent because translucent is uh, multiplying the rgb by a so if we choose a times two then everything is multiplied by two so just pick mask and and you're good to go uh, then I take get actor bounds, take vector length, plug it to alpha, and we can kind of take it out in the material. You can of course increase the ratio, maybe multiply by two, maybe uh, do something else. Whatever you want is just you know a foundation. The rest is uh, the same. I'm just gonna unplug the debug node, and let's go to to the material. How does this look? It's very simple. This uh, you already saw this, saw this uh, in the arrays in materials video. You already know this code. Uh, we have uh, locations. This textures. This texture is basically our array. We plug it to a custom uh, material expression. We loop through those locations, and if the pixel we are trying to check is close to that uh, location, close to one of those locations, we output uh, one, and if not, then we output zero. zero. Uh, and this is, uh, this is the node that is working with uh, basically a static threshold, so every object would have 500, but since we are using alpha channel, we, had, we have to kind of rewrite it a little bit, and use a uh, sample color A when we are checking with the distance, because here we are just using a uh, threshold and yeah, we cannot really <laughs> get the size from, from the actor itself. 
with that method. If we want to use the uh, the actor size, then we have to sample the, the alpha channel, which is this thing here. We basically sample that in a loop and check against that distance. So when we plug it to LERP, plug it to extinction, and we basically good to go. And if you want to use some kind of fancy fork, then we can just plug this thing again. Exactly the same thing I used in the volume fork because it's just stylizing the fog. Plug it to A, apply save, and we have a very nice fog stylized. So yeah, that's it. That was actually very simple. The only uh, hard part was figuring this out, why the alpha channel is not working, but once I got it to work, then the rest is pretty much very simple and easy. So yeah, I hoped uh, you enjoyed this video, I hope you're gonna use it in your projects and maybe uh, drop a link where you use that. And yeah, that's it from me. Drop a like, drop a sub, write a comment and see you next time. Bye bye.